Let's have a look at a common problem. Here I have two platform characters. They both have a simple platform movement script attached to them and as you can see, this script has some exposed properties. As expected, both characters have their different values which makes them move a little bit differently. For example, the human moves slower than a goblin but can jump higher. Let's say you want to adjust some of those settings. You test the change and decide you need to further adjust the value. Or multiple values. Then you stop the game and... Well, all the values are gone. Not only those that you changed, but also you may have trouble remembering the initial values you had there, in case you want to use them again. Let's see how scriptable objects can help us with that. First, let's discuss what scriptable objects are. When you create a script in Unity, you usually create a class which inherits from mono behavior. This allows this class to be directly attached to game objects and provides you all the useful mechanisms like update, start or awake event functions. Scriptable objects, or scriptables, as I like to call them, are slightly different. They inherit from, well, scriptable object rather than mono behavior, and that allows them to do some fantastic things for us. Today we'll have a look at how we can use them to store variants of script configuration and how it differs from using regular mono behavior properties. First, let's create a new script and call it movement config. Let's clean it up. And as we want to store in it all of the properties of our movement script, let's place those inside. As mentioned before, the script has to inherit from scriptable object. Now let's use some IDE magic to convert all the fields into properties with public getters and private setters. This will expose the properties to other scripts, but will not allow them to modify them directly. There is one property which I am modifying within my movement. It's is facing right. So instead of moving it to the config, I want to store only the initial information about object facing. Thus, I am changing its name to is starting facing right. Now, where the magic starts is after adding the create asset menu attribute to the class. As soon as we add it, inside Unity, we will be able to create instances of those configs. You know, like individual files that we can modify. Over time, you will have some more scriptables, so it is worth to organize them nicely. Using the menu name parameter, you can select a menu path for your file, and using the file name, you can set its default name. Ok, now let's create the first config for our human character. To copy the values nicely, I click on the three dots on the simple platform movement script and select Properties. This opens the small window where I can see all the values. Now I click on my config file and simply fill all the values. Now I do the same for the goblin character. Now it's time to get rid of the properties on the platform movement script. As mentioned earlier, I leave in place the is facing right field, as I modify it within the script. Instead of all the other fields, I create a serialized field for the movement config. Now within the script, I update all of the references to point to the right properties through that particular config. Lastly, I default the is facing right to is starting facing right. I go back to Unity, assign the configs to the right characters and all is done. 
not only I can have as many reusable configs as I want, but also I can modify the values at runtime and those will persist after I stop the game. Fantastic! If you found this tutorial useful, consider subscribing to my channel. Have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye!